Okay, here we are in AMP 2012. We're at the uh, Waves booth. Uh, we're going to talk about some plugins. We're going to do this in two phases here. So, uh, first thing we're going to do is talk to Luke Smith here with Waves, and he's going to show us two new plugins that are going to be coming out. And you said February. Uh, yeah, we have uh, the Waves loudness meter, which is actually already out and available. And then we're also going to show the in phase uh, plugin, which is going to be around February. Yeah, absolutely. Excellent. Well, let's take a look. Okay, thanks. So. Let's go ahead and start with the loudness meter, which is here on the right. And um, essentially what we tried to create with this Waves loudness meter is um, a very simple plugin that will allow users to appropriately deliver their content worldwide. Doesn't matter if you're delivering it in the European standard or you need to deliver it in the US standard, um, this meter has you covered. All right? So we have uh, ability to do short term, long term, average loudness and true peak measurements, right? We support the ATSC, ITU, and EBU loudness measurement standards, right? And um, we have different weighting options here, so we have the three different methods available here. If I select EBU, then I'm using the foreground as an anchor. If I'm selecting LM1, it's gonna be the classic Fletcher Munson curve. And then if I use dialog, then we're going to be using actually the dialog as an anchor. And uh, we also created our own intelligent dialog detection where we can actually detect and measure speech in a program. So we have those three different settings, and we also have different weighting options here. So we can use the ITU 1770 weighting spec if we want to, or use LEQs um, if need be. Over here, we can actually select uh, metering the stereo channel, which is actually, I have this on a stereo bus right now, or we can just monitor the left channels, or we can just meter the right channel. Um, we have a short max and a short min setting, which is very handy. Um, you would set these up to say, I don't want this to go below this volume, and I don't want this to go above this volume. And once you set them, you have overs and under warnings that, as you play back, will um, collect any sort of uh, problems where the volume is either too low or too high. Now, the interesting thing about this is that if I go into my automation window, I can actually add those automation warnings as an automatable parameter in my DAW. And that would allow me to write an automation lane just by pressing play, and then I can go back and see where it went over, where it went under, and make touch-ups really fast. We also have the ability to follow the transport of the DAW, so we can select that right there. We also have the ability to stop and start. We can pause the measurement and uh, play it back based on whether or not dialog is present. Um, we also have the ability to do um, different scales, so we can go into the 18 dB or the 9 dB scale if need be. Right? We have different presets for um, EBU standards, the ATC, ATSC standards, and even if you're delivering uh, content for Discovery Channel. Now, the custom pre-filtering section is interesting and uh, came from a recommendation uh, in the video game market. Uh, so you're able to actually put a filter on your audio prior to the measurement. And that allows you to uh, approximate what the loudness is going to be in, um, a, on a pair of speakers that might not have a very large frequency range. Right? And for our broadcast guys, we also have the ability to export um, logging and the CSV format. So like I said before, no matter what type of content you're trying to deliver um, to, to whatever type of uh, content provider, we have you covered with this meter. All right, let's press play. Now this is uh, currently available, and it's uh, for version 8, obviously, then, right? Exactly right. You see how it tracks? So nice, clean meters there. Now, if we move over to the in phase, this will be um, using our all-pass technology here. So with in phase, it's a very uh, handy way to uh, check the phase correlation of two different tracks, right? And I have it right now on a stereo track in Pro Tools, so I have an alpha channel and a beta channel here, A channel and a B channel. And the 
drill is really to just click capture, right? And then I'll go ahead and press play. And it does a two second clip, right? And then I'm able to actually see my waveform right here and adjust the phase with my mouse by dragging around. Or I have a nice delay scroll bar that'll give me 20 milliseconds either way. And I have my correlation meter. So as I'm adjusting this, I'm noticing that the further I move this back, the more in phase those two get. All right, so the higher the number of the correlation meter, the more in phase they are. And if you're in a negative value, it sounds like you might want to think about doing a 180 flip. Right? Now, the all pass technology incorporates two orders of filters here. So we're able to either adjust the phase of a very specific frequency or a very large uh, frequency spectrum and actually combine the two. So in the first filter, you might want to have uh, the full frequency spectrum uh, being adjusted. And then on the second filter, you might just want to select a specific frequency and have that be adjusted. And when I have the 360 degrees selected, I have a slope available to basically adjust the exact frequencies that are being shifted. I also have gain knobs right here, so I can adjust the gain. And then I also have, if we take a look down here, the monitor section. So if I select stereo mix, then it's going to put the alpha channel in the far left and the beta channel in the far right. If I select mono mix, then it's going to collapse them, obviously, into mono. And this will allow me to monitor one or the other. Last thing I'll show you up here is the copy AB. We um, put some more uh, advanced copy and paste functions here. So if you want to copy this uh, setting, you hit copy AB, and then you can go to another channel instance, put this on, and so, uh, either just paste the A channel settings or just the B channel settings. So we feel like it's a very um, powerful, powerful yeah. utility plugin, and um, you know, don't necessarily need to phase align everything because no. you want to keep some of the interesting characteristics of your mix, but uh, this could be used in tracking, mixing, and even mastering. So there you have it. Excellent, and that's out in? This is going to be out around February. Okay. Yep. All right, and that's part of, part of, we'll be part of Bundle 8. Exactly.